Well, hello there. My ABH palette came in. So this is a new ABH rose metal palette that launched for the holiday 2022 season. And I have to say, let's talk about order, shipping, etc. When this initially first launched on ABH, I was going to wait it out and order it from Sephora, you know, to get the points. And also from ordering ABH in the past, it always came in like a week. And by the time it came, Sephora would have already launched it. I would have gotten it sooner, which probably isn't that important to you. But if you like to get it fast, that's important to know. It's only important for me because I like to get the reviews up quickly. But after waiting a couple days, it still hadn't launched on Sephora. So like a day or two ago, I paid for expedited shipping on the ABH website. And it came lickety split. So impressive shipping from ABH. I will be ordering from there from now on because it's first kind of slow in Florida. Anyways, it came fast. Love the ABH shipping. And also came well protected. So I did already previously film a shopper drop on this. The general consensus I would say is most of you guys were like, eh about it you know we couldn't really tell because all of the images looked different in different lighting we thought in some cases it looked repetitive and my favorite one was so many of you guys told me it looked dirty and muddy <laughs> so we have the palette we're gonna crack the myth and see what it looks like in person though i've already taken a peek at it but thank you to those of you who did participate in the shopper drop that helped me curate what i want to talk about the most in today's review so let's take a look now this is available at the abh website but Ulta and Sephora, if you want to get the points, I'll have it linked down below to there as well and anywhere else that it is available. This palette is $55, which is pricey, and it's more pricey than normal palettes because they put more product in this palette, which I don't know who asked for that. I'd rather pay less for less product. But anyways, you might feel differently if you aren't a psycho crazy makeup collector like me, but for my fellow psycho crazy makeup collectors, we like less product less money but if you use kind of the same palette every day i can see you definitely being happy about this product increase now online it does say that this is limited edition since this is for their holiday collection and normally abh sticks true to that in that they won't produce any more palettes for their limited edition stuff but we'll see how this does i'm not sure if this will go on sale i think it might i think it has potential to go on sale but we'll see i don't know but it is limited edition and then the kind of vibe that they were going for was moody grungy metal looks right yeah okay so let's take a look here's the box that's gonna come in it's gonna match the outer packaging of the actual product itself and then here is the back as well. And then you have all the information, ingredients. It's kind of hard to read. And then here's the packaging. A lot of you guys hated the packaging. In fact, on my shopper drop, I don't think one of you said that you liked the packaging. I think it looks better in person. It does kind of look like a slightly old rusty metal worn leather kind of appearance we do have these details abh trying to make it look more expensive with that and i think that really does help it's not as bad as in person but i'm still not in love with it and they call it rose metals which we'll talk about when we get there but it is a pressed pigment and eyeshadow palette i know a lot of you guys were concerned about that so i will talk about that in today's review so the palette is made in the usa and has a 12 month shelf life and is cruelty free hey are you ready to see the inside it does have a mirror here's the palette here's the colors i find that with the texture of the background here it kind of throws me off with the colors a little bit it's hard to read the words and it almost is the same texture as the shimmers look but here it is now a hot topic with the last palette where there were a bunch of pressed pigments which are deemed not safe for the eye area in this palette there is only one and that is going to be dune right here which is not even that special of a shade so if you take it out if you don't want to use those colors well this one color every other shade is eye safe now what that means is just use with caution they're mostly saying that to stop a lawsuit here's my thought on the pressed pigment not safe for eye area i'm gonna say 99 of you are gonna be good i use those shades around my eyes all the time this is not a new statement in makeup pressed pigment palettes have been around for a long time and most of you will not notice anything if you have particularly sensitive eyes or skin i would be careful maybe do a patch test first on the skin but for the most part, I think you'll be good. 
but don't sue me if you have a reaction because they do have that warning. But for me, that doesn't put me off at all. I've never had any types of issues with that. And in other countries, this palette would be eye safe. It's just weird FDA rulings with the US. Like I said, unless you have extremely sensitive eyes or skin, you'll probably be fine. I don't think it's anything too much to worry about. Let's zoom in and get to swatching. I've gotten a lot of comments about how you guys don't like how I swatch, so I'll go in a little heavier, but normally with my swatches, the reason that they don't look good is because I use a light hand because that tells me a lot about the formula and what I want to use. I don't do it to actually see the colors and make it aesthetic. It's so that we can see how it's gonna apply to the eyes. But I'll make a bigger effort this time. Here we go. <laughs> All right, so here's the overall color story. Now, one thing that I didn't notice that you guys pointed out is it's an overall very earthy palette and a lot of us thought it looked dirty because they advertised it more so as a rose palette. There was a comment on my shopper drop about the color story that I felt like summed it up perfectly. This is what Deanna said, and it was hilarious by the way. It's an earthy palette. They advertise it as a rose and it throws you off when you realize it's the whole plant, the dirt, and it's dying. Deanna! <laughs> I read that comment, I about fell out of the chair, but yes. <laughs> the color story is a dying plan, but in the best way possible, right? I wasn't moved in my shopper drop about this palette initially. I do think it looks prettier in person once you accept the earthiness that it is. Okay, so we're gonna get started with Rose Quartz Royal and Haze. They feel super soft. These look like really good holiday tones on my finger, right? I don't think I'm doing a better job of swatching. I just can't find it in my heart to dig in deeply into these shadows. Rose Quartz is a metallic pink champagne with sparkling reflex. I would say the finish of it is more of a satin. Honestly, I wouldn't say metallic. Metallic usually has a little bit more reflect here. This is Royal, which is a sparkling burgundy with pink reflex. Very pigmented. This is with the light hand. Really great color for the holiday, though I find I don't use shades like these very often. This one I'm excited about. Haze is a metallic silver gold with multi-dimensional reflex. This is my kind of shade. It's like a dirty gold, so it has kind of some green and taupe in there. Yeah, okay, I'm already liking this palette a little bit more. I'm pumped to swatch this Rose Fire shade. The creamy metallic shades, they feel really creamy. This one almost feels like, like a cream shadow. It's so creamy. Not like a wet cream though, like more of a dry cream, if that makes sense. This is the kind of thing where you just pick up so much pigment because it's so creamy, but not wet creamy. So Rose Fire is a metallic fiery copper with multi-dimensional reflex. This one is more sheer than I thought. It it felt really creamy and pan, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Sunrose is a matte peachy brown with sparkling reflex, which I don't know how much is gonna sparkle on the eyelid. And then Nova, wait, 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 moment of silence. Oh my God, this could go like around my whole lip wrist, like a bracelet. The most uneven swatch ever, but wow. This is a metallic golden bronze with multi-dimensional effects. That's a top row. I mean, dang, <laughs> that's pretty. Ooh, this is an exciting one to swatch right here, Heavenly. So we're gonna get these three right here. Heavenly, a metallic platinum gold with multi-dimensional reflex. A little bit more on the sheer side, pretty close to my skin tone as well. It has a lighter weight feel to it. It's not so thick and heavy like the shade above it. Element is a metallic rosy brown. Almost has a little bit of bronziness to it. And then Ashes is a matte gray taupe with sparkling reflex. It's very pretty. The mattes in here kind of have a subtle sheen to them, which is gonna be very pretty on mature eyelids. Okay, last three. We have Dune, Nocturne, and Noble. That's what they look like. These are great deepening shades. Dune is a matte rustic brown. The mattes are swatching lovely. Nocturne is a metallic graystone with sparkling reflex. Pretty. And then Noble is a matte plum brown. 
So here's the palette. I think it's very pretty. I'm going to stick by saying this is not my style when it comes to eyeshadow palettes. It's a little bit deeper and more grungy than I even expected it to be, even though that's literally how they described it. But I think this has a lot of appropriate tones for medium to deep complexions. Please confirm that if you have a deeper complexion. Obviously, I can't personally <laughs> confirm that, but there's a lot of deep shimmer tones, which are gorgeous. I feel like we could have gone even a little deeper with the mattes just to go with the deeper shimmer shades. It's very pretty. It definitely is an earthy toned palette, kind of old rustic metal kind of vibes to it. Not my style, but very pretty. And the swatches, whew, swatches were good. So let me put together a look and we'll play with this together. Change my mind. We're actually going to do two different looks because as I was looking at the palette, because there's so many shimmers and I have a particularly small eyelid, <laughs> I wanted to do two looks just to try as many colors as possible because this is a very metallic heavy palette. The true mattes are like these four and there's a lot of heavily metallic shimmers, which makes it hard to put multiple on the eyelid. I think this palette's going to be a great kind of one and done, two and done eyeshadow palette. You know, if you just use these two together, one of these together, like it'll be great for simple looks. So I don't know about using this for complex looks, but let's see. I'm going to start off with ashes right here. This is a shade where it is a matte, but I felt like it had a sheen in the swatch. Ooh, very pigmented. Definitely staying true to that heavily pigmented ABH formula. Blending beautifully. This is a Kaleidos S1 brush, BT dubs. Oh, by the way, ABH eye primer is my base. We're gonna deepen with an A502 from BK Beauty with Noble. They do have some kickbacks, so make sure you tap off your brush. Nothing crazy like ABH has done in the past, but there is a little bit of kickback to note so that you just tap your brush off first, but it doesn't seem to be so powdery that you would need to do your eye makeup before face makeup. I think if you're responsible, light-handed, and tap off your brush, you should be okay. We'll see when we get to the shimmers. Pretty much blended itself. Wow, let's see if we can build up the depth here. Oh yeah, you totally can. It blends super good so that you can get light depth with each matte, but it builds up. You really want to pack it in one area to get more depth because I feel like a black would be a really appropriate shade to have in this palette. That's pretty. I have to use this Nova shade because it's by far the creamiest shade and so beautiful. I'm using just an old Morphe brush. Wow. And I mean, this would give you even more with the finger because of how much picked up on my finger when I swatched it. But I'm almost trying to keep it at bay <laughs> and just use a brush. Oh, you're definitely able to get some really pretty neutral looks with this palette. It's not colorful really by any means. This is going to be a palette that a lot of people are going to be able to wear, even if visually it wasn't the most exciting to me. I think the looks are going to be stunning with these. Next, let's check out Haze, which looks a little bit lighter, a little bit more gunmetal-y, kind of has some green in there. Just making sure that they look different from one another and they totally do. And these colors are picking up beautifully with a brush and they'll pick up beautifully with a finger as well. I'm getting very slight fallout. Nothing crazy, but something to note. Let's see how heavenly looks on the inner corner. Stunning. This one will look really pretty all over with the lid to brighten up the look. Okay. And I'm going to redefine with a little bit of noble again, the outer corner. Let's do a cranberry kind of eye next. We're going to start off with rose quartz. I'm going to do just a really light wash of it. They label it as a metallic shade. It's more of a satin and it carries a lot of pigment. Once again, a little goes a long way, but since it's more satiny, the less you apply, the more appropriate it can be for a transition shade. Like at this point, you can't even tell that ABH labels it as a metallic Shade. There definitely is reflex, but nothing crazy. Don't be afraid of a little shimmer in the crease. That's a really great transition shade. Let's hop into Sun Rose and kind of keep this low. So this is like a warmer brown shade. Very pretty. The shade will look gorgeous with the golden shades in this palette. If I were to do a third look, it would be with Rose Fire as a lid shade to create kind of a very coppery look. And then we're going to go into Dune. Not doing anything crazy with the looks. Just trying to test as many shades as I can. Ooh, this is pretty. Again, blending itself out can be built up to be quite rich. It's a very rich 
shade, all things considered. And with Sunrose in the crease, I feel like that neutralized it a little bit. It's not quite as red as you would expect it to be. And I'm taking the original big fluffy brush that we used, keeping it really seamless looking. I'm gonna apply Royal right here all over the eyelid. I'm gonna use my finger for this. Wow, this color screams holiday to me. I'm going in with a brush now just to kind of make sure everything is evenly dispersed all over the lid. I'm gonna take a brush with a touch of Dune, which is that one not eye safe color, but it's blending out so beautifully, honestly. It's a gorgeous formula. See, like this shade all over the lid alone would be perfect. If you like simple makeup, I think you'll like this palette because it's full of stunning one and done shades or two and done like put one matte shade in the crease and then one of the shimmers all over the lid you have like the simplest prettiest eye look i want to see what rose fire has to offer so i'm gonna just pop this in the center of the eyelid. This is a small Coastal Scents brush. Unfortunately, Coastal Scents is no longer a brand. Oh, that added a really pretty pop. I think for the lower lash line, I'm gonna do Royal all over and then some of this Rose Fire. Well, that's gorgeous. Let me pop on some concealer, but I did get a little bit of fallout, especially on this eye where I put down multiple lid shades and a little bit right here. It's nothing crazy. Like I said, if you're responsible, you could get away with not doing your eye makeup first, but if you're messing around with packing a bunch of shimmers then I'd consider doing that. It's got a little bit of lower lash line work in so I have not yet used Nocturne so we're gonna use this in the lower lash line. Refer number 13. This is like a deep metal pen of shade and see it compared to the top of my lid it's much more cool and gray compared to what I have up here. I do want to warm it up though so I'm gonna take some of Element right here. Just put that right over top. Wow, that covered was so much ease. <laughs> Very pigmented. I'm just gonna run it right over top, I guess. I didn't expect to get so much pigment from that. I'm gonna go back into Nocturne, kind of deepen out here. And then reblending Noble, which is this shade right here. Very pretty. Now, lower lash line on the other side. I'm not doing anything new. I'm just gonna go in with Royal. I'm skipping Dune. So I feel like Royal can hold its own pigment, yeah. Doesn't need that under layer. I mean, all of the looks that I'm doing are very grungy, which is honestly very on trend. They're saying, not that I'm a trendy person, but it's gonna be trendy this winter for grungy makeup. This is a perfect palette that came out at the perfect time. I'm definitely changing my tune on this palette. And we're going into Rose Fire just right there in the center to add a little bit of brightness. Okay, cool, let me do liner and lashes, but here are the two looks that I came up with. Super grungy, moody fall vibes, which is exactly what ABH was going for. They definitely got that. Okay, so here is the look with liner and lashes. I'll have everything else that I'm wearing on my face linked in the description box, but yeah, this is definitely a grungy dream for the fall and winter, if that's the vibe you're going for. I couldn't help but notice, but the looks I created with the Gemini 2 palette from cosmetics were also similar vibes so if you're looking for kind of a vibe dupe you can get this vibe with the Melt Gemini 2 if you have that palette. Here they are side by side I mean there obviously is differences here but again if you want the overall look and have the melt then you probably don't need the ABH which leads me into the next portion of this video before I discuss my final thoughts. I pulled some palettes that I want to do comparisons between so I'm going to show you swatches between this and the melt. I also have the stack here of existing ABH palettes. I take back the dupe vibes between the Melt Gemini and ABH. The top is ABH. The bottom are the similar shades that I could find from the Melt. There's not very many, though they are really close. But I still stand by, if you want a grungy look, Melt is another alternative, but not a dupe. <laughs> of course, we had to do the Nouveau palette. This is the most recent ABH palette. And we've been saying that... Rose Metals is the sultry sister, oops, <laughs> to Nouveau. And I have to agree with that. I mean, I think they are just different enough, but they give off a similar feeling, you know, related, but definitely not twins. So swatch comparison, 
Again, rose metals, and this is the similar colors from the Nouveau. I would say they're definitely different enough to where if you have Nouveau, you can pick up rose metals because, I mean, sure, a couple of the mattes are similar, but that's about it. There's like two shades. Okay, guys, I am pretty excited to show you this one. The bottom one is the Master Palette when they did a collaboration with Makeup by Mario. So this has been gone for years. You can't get your hands on it. It's super duper old. But honestly, you guys, these are pretty close. The finishes are very different. The Makeup by Mario palette doesn't have those reflective metallic shades, which is something I like more about the rose metals. But color tone wise, take a look at this. Rose metals on top once again, Makeup by Mario at the bottom. Right? Totally similar. The finishes, like I said, are what's mostly different here. But oh my gosh, this is the closest ABH has gotten to the Makeup by Mario palette. And this ignited a fire in me. I'm really excited about this. I also got questions about subculture compared to the rose metals. Honestly, I don't find them to be very similar. They have like the green and red going on, but there really aren't many shades that I want to even do swatch comparisons for. So yeah, these to me aren't that similar. There's a handful of colors maybe, but yeah, they're just both grungy, you know? The last one that I got a lot of requests for was the Carly Bible palette. And I could definitely see where you guys are coming from, but let me show you the swatch comparisons. So the bottom is the Carly Bible, and honestly, no. I would say these are like distant relatives. They really are not close at all, so <laughs> yeah. Okay, so overall, I have to say, I've kind of changed my tune a little bit about this palette. Now I'm not gonna say it's my style because it's definitely not, but I think once it's applied to the eyes, it's gonna be a very useful palette for a lot of you. First of all, ABH hit the nail on the head. This is what's going to be trending for the fall and winter makeup grunginess right here with this guy. So this is exactly what you get, it's super trendy. Quality in here, phenomenal, did not have a single issue with any of these shadows, so it's great ABH quality. If you enjoy ABH quality, you're getting nothing different here. It's just as amazing. It's perfect for those one and done simple looks. You don't have to put too much thought into it. Some of you might not like this, but there's a lot of shimmers, but I think that makes it great for the one and done kind of style look. And for me, this definitely looks a lot prettier on the eyelids than I feel like it looks in the pan, because even now this palette to me is like an enigma. I'm like, do I like it or not? Like, what does it really look like? What is this color story? I can't be the only one that thinks like that, but once it's on the eyes, I really enjoy what it delivers. I, it's just one of those palettes where it doesn't stand out in the ABH line to me. Like if you put it in a lineup with all the other palettes, I'm definitely not going to have my eye drawn to that one, but dang, it delivers. It looks so good on the eyes, and it's just gonna be one of those palettes where ABH did play it safe. However, it's gonna be one that people use and will enjoy. So I hope this review was helpful to you and the swatch can comparisons and all of that. If you are as confused as me about this palette, I hope I helped you to kind of make your decision on whether or not you think you will be needing this palette. And with that being said, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye guys, have a good one.